Imagine waking up to discover that your crypto portfolio vanished overnight. It sounds like a far-fetched nightmare. But with the rise of quantum computing, this risk is becoming increasingly real. Earlier this month, Google's groundbreaking quantum chip, Willow, demonstrated power that left the tech world in awe. With this progress comes a chilling possibility. The encryption securing your Bitcoin and most cryptocurrencies could soon be cracked. What would happen if a computer came online that started suddenly stealing people's money? Everyone would rush to the exits. Would the market go to zero? Probably pretty close, if not zero. How close are we to this nightmare scenario? How much time do we have to prepare? And what steps can you take to protect your investments before it's too late? In today's video, we'll answer all of these questions. But first, let's figure out what a quantum computer actually is. A quantum computer is a type of computer that processes information differently from traditional ones. Instead of using simple bits, zeros and ones, it uses qubits, which can exist in multiple states at the same time, thanks to a property called superposition. This ability allows quantum computers to solve extremely complex problems much faster than regular computers ever could. This technology could revolutionize fields like artificial intelligence or medicine. For example, it could enable the rapid development of life-saving drugs. However, quantum computing also presents a threat to modern cryptography, which is used to safeguard government institutions, banking networks, and of course, cryptocurrencies. Most cryptocurrencies, like Bitcoin, are secured by the elliptic curve digital signature algorithm. This cryptographic system protects transactions by ensuring that private keys can't be derived from public keys. However, a powerful enough quantum computer could theoretically crack ECDSA. Here's how that would happen. Alice makes a Bitcoin transaction, exposing her public key on the blockchain. An attacker uses a quantum computer to break the elliptic curve cryptography, quickly deriving Alice's private key from her public key. With the private key, the attacker signs a transaction and transfers all of Alice's Bitcoin to their own wallet. And the Bitcoin network accepts it as a legitimate transaction. The entirety of public private key pair infrastructure is at risk. Once the perception, or rather the confidence in public private key pair infrastructure is com compromised, things are gonna start going to zero very quickly. So does quantum computing pose a threat to your crypto holdings? The shorter answer is no, at least not yet. Today's quantum computers, like those developed by Google and IBM, are nowhere near powerful enough to threaten Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. For instance, Google's Willow chip can perform tasks in five minutes that would take classical computers 10 septillion years. As impressive as that is, Willow only has 105 qubits, while it would require millions of qubits to break Bitcoin's encryption. But here's the worrying part. What makes Willow so groundbreaking is its advancement in something that's called error correction. The thing is, qubits are inherently unstable and prone to errors, which is a real challenge for quantum computing. Error correction techniques are used to detect and fix these errors enabling multiple qubits to work together as a single, reliable unit known as a logical qubit. Willow shows that it's possible to reduce errors on a larger scale, paving the way for more stable quantum processors in the future. All I have to do is scale my chip to a few thousand qubits, and what I get is maybe a dozen really good logical qubits. I scale it to a few tens of thousands of qubits, and maybe what I get is a few hundred logical qubits. And these are now very good logical qubits that last for several milliseconds or seconds, and I can do very complicated computations with them, such as trying to break Bitcoin's encryption keys. So how much time do we have before that happens? To get a sense of that, let's remember that 20 years ago, the Intel Pentium 4 was cutting edge technology. It was running around three gigahertz and handling a few hundred million operations per second. Today, even budget smartphones easily surpass that, with processors running at faster speeds and handling billions of operations every second. Experts estimate that quantum computers capable of threatening Bitcoin security security are likely to emerge in about a decade from now. Others say that this could happen as soon as 2030. Governments and tech companies are investing tens of billions of dollars into quantum research. And the thing is, this technology evolves exponentially, which makes it harder to predict exact timelines. So the problem with exponential processes is that it looks like nothing is really happening until the very end, and then everything happens all at once at the very end. And so propelling against this kind of threats is very hard because it's very easy to underestimate it in the beginning. So is cryptocurrency doomed? Not necessarily. We still have a few years before quantum computing becomes a real threat. However, this issue can't be ignored and we need to use this time to prepare and act. Researchers are already working on quantum resistant cryptography to secure cryptocurrencies in the quantum age. Vitalik Buterin, Ethereum's co-founder, has been vocal about the need for preparation. He has announced the splurge, 
a future upgrade aimed at making the Ethereum network resistant to quantum threats. The challenge is that quantum resistant solutions are in their infancy, and there's still a lot of work to be done. You cannot get a year to the deadline and fix it. Anything which is elliptic curve based will need to be replaced. There are things that we just don't know how to do with post-quantum cryptography, and that requires genuine new research, and it will be hard. So it needs to start now. But the challenge is not only technological, it's also social. For cryptocurrencies to fully migrate to quantum resistance cryptography, there must be broad consensus among all stakeholders. Miners, developers, and holders must all be on board for the transition to succeed. Yeah, there is the problem of developing a vaccine, but it's also the problem that you have to get to everyone and convince everyone to actually get vaccinated. If you migrate and everything is quantum safe, but half of the users fail to implement the quantum fa uh, safe measures and they lose their coin, that doesn't look good, right? So what can you as a crypto investor do to protect yourself? First, diversify your investments. Obviously, you shouldn't put all of your money into crypto, no matter how bullish you are. But also look into cryptocurrencies that are preparing for the quantum era. They might offer a hedge against future risks. Networks um, and communities which prepare well in advance and demonstrate capability and confidence and take this seriously will actually see uh, their tokens do very well. Um, the ones who are just kind of like totally ignoring the problem, I think will We'll, we'll actually see uh, token performance dramatically decline as more and more people become aware of the issue. Secondly, owning cryptocurrency doesn't just make you an investor. It makes you a stakeholder in its future. This means you have the power to help shape its development, including making it more resistant to quantum threats. All they have to do is go to the relevant core developers or foundations, uh, Bitcoin core developers, Ethereum foundation, Solana foundation, and make their voice heard and say, we, you may not think that this is important to you. However, we are a big part of what gives you value. And we have followed the news and we believe that this is a risk to our rights, uh, to our freedom. And you should take it seriously. Finally, stay informed about developments in quantum computing to ensure that you're not caught off guard. What's important is check whether the roadmap is progressing at the correct rate. The simplest thing to do is take the largest three, four, five manufacturers and keep an eye on what they say. And if they say we're going forward at the predicted rate, then you know roughly where the end of the line is. Well, that's it for today's video. Now it's your turn. Are you scared about the potential future of quantum computing? And what steps are you taking to prepare? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe for more insights into the world of cryptocurrency and technology.